If you're gay, then you're gay. Don't pretend that you're straight. You could be who you are any day of the week. Tell me what do you see in her? Cause I have been living in sweet despair. I don't really know what's in the cards of my heart. All I really know is my tears won't dry tonight. Love was hidden within your smoke. Blinding lights and disheartened hope. guys that was sweet despair by Cheryl Lloyd off her sorry I'm late album if you guys have actually listened to that album there's a song called sirens I literally hate that song that's why I decided to skip it so last chapter um um Harry and Louie apparently had a little bit of a like, death situation, because they thought their daughter had, their young other daughter died, but no, there was another girl with the same name who apparently died. He was a young girl, but, um, their baby was fine, and they actually got to take her home. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what happened last chapter. We're doing chapter 29 today. Alright, if you guys want to read along, you guys can click the link in the description box, and let's go. Alright, chapter 29. Nile's point of view. Five months. Jumpers hide my stomach a bit, but you can tell I've gained a bit of weight. I'm a bit short of breath, and now my baby Mason is right, is right on my lungs as well. Thank God we only have two more months of school before it's over and we have summer vacation. Liam, I'm scared I finally admitted to him. Only four more months and we'll be parents. Time flies. Baby, don't be scared. Everything will be fine. When Mason arrives, you'll be a great mother. He joked as I glared at him. I'm not the mother, I spat, resting, resting a hand on my stomach as I looked out of the passenger side of the window of Liam's car as we drove to school. No, but you're taking the motherly role by carrying our baby, so basically you're the mother, I explained. He explained as I sighed around my stomach a bit as the baby moved around. He never stops moving. Hey, don't you have that big football game tonight, I asked. Changing the subject? Yeah, I do. I want to stay home, though. Rest up, please. I don't need you sitting on those hard metal bleachers in the condition you are, you're in, he said. But, no buts, he said sternly. I have knowing I wasn't going to win. I crossed my arms and rested them on top of my stomach. He won't stop moving, I grumbled as he laughed a bit. Trapping his, <clears throat> trapping his finger on the steering wheel. He's going to be a more hyper kid than even ever when he's born. He smiled. 
Or he's only going to move around until he's born, and then he'll be a sleepy, lazy little boy, I cooed as, as he laughed. I guess we won't know until he arrives now, won't we? He said as we pulled up to the school. Yeah, I guess, I sighed as he parked and we got out. He quickly came over to me, wrapping his arms around my waist protectively. I put my bag on my shoulder before leaning into him a bit. We walked through the crowded halls before we finally got to our lockers. Liam! Niall! We, we heard turning around to see Zane coming towards us. Hey Zane, I, ex I explained as he gives us both a side hug. Hey, how's the squirt? <laughs> he asked, talking about the baby. I couldn't put a hand on my stomach, so I just shrugged, getting what I needed from my locker. He is fine, moving a lot, I explained. So, Payne, are you ready for tonight? He asked Liam as we nodded and smiled a bit. Definitely, we're going to win this thing. He achieved before giving him a high five. I rolled my eyes, putting my bag over my shoulder. Well, anyways, I'm gonna go to class. I love you. I pecked Liam's cheek. I smiled that... I, he smiled that beautiful smile at me with a nod. I love you too. Be safe, okay? He raised a worried eyebrow while I nodded. I will be. Anyways, Zane is in all my classes. You're not, so I'll be in, So I'll be good. I explained as he kissed my forehead, nodding once again. Okay, bye, love. He said sadly. He hugged me before walking to his first class. Zane and I headed to ours. So Liam probably doesn't want you to go tonight, he, he asked, and I shake and I sighed, shaking my head. No, he doesn't want me to stand on the metal bleachers in my situation. I'll probably go to Harry and Louis' flat, maybe help them with the triplets. You know practice you know practice for this for the little one, I, I pointed to my stomach that was hidden by my jumper after jumper. I nodded as we walked into class. It flew by quickly, and every class did with me, but anyways, my other classes went just by as fast, and soon it was lunchtime. I haven't seen, o I haven't seen Ollie today, but that just made me nervous as hell. Baby, calm down, he's absent. He got, uh, he got a con concussion last night at practice? Yeah. Pretty severe, too. He has to stay out of school for a week. He can't look at the brighter light, any bright lights. Not even his own phone screen, Liam explained. And it, and my knee bount but my knee bouncing nervously. I know, but I can't help it. I don't know. I bit my bottom lip as I ra as he wrapped an arm around me, resting my resting one hand on my stomach as I rested my head on his shoulder. You should eat here. He handed me an apple. I sighed before taking a bite. I wasn't really that all that hungry. But I knew the baby needed something. He stopped moving around eleven thirty this afternoon, so right before lunch basically. The bell soon rang, so I threw the remains of my apple away. Liam guided me to his class, which was with him. But I don't want to go to biology, I whined. He laughed, and I put a hand on it, on the small uh, on the small of my back and pushed me a bit to that class. But you have to go. But I bet next year you don't even have to come here. I bet you'll go right to college, he explained. I sighed as we walked in. We sat down. He was my lab partner, so we sat on stools right next to each other as we put a hand on my knee under the table. He rubbed it soothingly as I had to sit up a bit straighter to breathe easy. I couldn't slouch in the slightest or my breath would be gone. Sorry, baby. I know how much your back hurts already. He whispered to Mayor. I whimpered quietly before sighing. I just have to deal with it. I want it. I just want to be home right now and sleep the day away. I sighed and put a hand on my back, rubbing it softly. We sat in the back so no one was paying attention to us. How about it? How about when we get home, I'll make you some tea and rub your back? He suggested, making me smile and nod. If you're wondering about my job, well, I'm on maternity leave, I guess I could say. I shouldn't be even on my feet that much, but I have to go to school. Paul let me off, so yeah, that sounds lovely. I closed my eyes for a second to rest them. I was so damn tired. Liam's point of view. I watched the sound close his eyes for a second. He was so tired. I felt bad for him. The baby is always moving at all hours of the night. It seems like he could never wear himself out. I continued to rub his back a bit, and he opened his eyes again. We didn't really pay much attention to class as we were in, in our own land. 
and I'm surprised we didn't get yelled at. Soon the day was over and we were driving home. Niall, Niall, sleeping most of the way. I didn't want to wake wake him, so I got out of the car, opened the door before taking him in my arms. Five month, five, uh, for a five month pregnant man, I'm surprised how light he is. I shut the door with my foot before making our way to a flat. Liam put me down too heavy. He muffled, drifting off. No, I'm not putting you down, and no, you're not heavy. I don't want to hear any more about it. You're perfectly, you're perfectly beautiful. I explained, kissing his forehead. I got a, I got in and went up to our room. I laid him down on our bed before helping him remove the four, yes, four jumpers. He was wearing, leaving him in his light blue t-shirt and showing off his cute stomach. Then I helped him take off his pants, leaving him leaving his boxers on, and then turn on his side, cradling his stomach. I smiled how cute he was before taking off his glasses, setting them on the table next to next to the bed. I'm going to make I'm going to make that tea. I promise. I'll be back, love. I whispered, leaning down, kissing his temple. He mumbled a reply, and I smiled a bit before walking to the kitchen. I made the tea, let it cool down before going back up to our room and seeing him fast asleep. I sighed, taking a sip of the tea in my hand, not knowing he would not knowing he would never drink it. I took off my pants, leaving me in my boxers, and I took off my shirt. I crawled in the bed beside him and instantly curled instantly curled into me, putting his head on my chest. I wrapped my arm around him securely. I was tired, but I wanted him to sleep. I I would have to wake him in about two hours as I would have to get ready for the football game and bring him over to Harry and Louie's place. I would love if Niall could be there for the big game, but I don't want him sitting on the cold bleachers surrounded by a ton of screaming people. It would be too worry about him the whole time. I bury my face into his soft hair, kissing the top of his head. I love this boy so much, I can't I, it's just, I can't even put it into words. He's my everything. And now we're having a little baby boy, and I couldn't be happier. I put my hands on his stomach, gently rubbing it a bit after or above his belly button. I love you, too. You guys are my everything, I whispered. Now I'll stay asleep, and I didn't feel any movement for the baby, so I'm guessing he's asleep, too. I sighed consistently before closing my eyes and falling into a light sleep. I'll just note. I'm sorry I made you wait for this crappy ass chapter. I'll make the next chapter better, and I'm thinking of adding a bit of drama. Ash. So, yeah, that's the end of this chapter. I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, gays, okay? Just after GSA. Mwah!